We're working our way through Lesson 6 for Fractions, Ratios, and Proportions, and now we're going to be comparing fractions. This is Lesson 6D. Hopefully you haven't missed or skipped any videos, but if you have and you need to, you can click the description for help. When two fractions have the same denominator, they have a common denominator. And fractions with a common denominator are like fractions. And they represent objects that were cut into the same number of pieces. So if we have two candy bars and both were cut into five pieces, they each have fifths. So if this is your candy bar and this is my candy bar, and you eat three-fifths and I only eat two-fifths, you ate more than I did. See? And it's easy to compare them because the denominators are the same. They're like fractions. They have the same denominator. They're cut into the same number of pieces. And we can see that three-fifths is more than two-fifths. When two fractions have the same denominator, the fraction with the larger numerator represents a larger amount. So because that's a three and the three is larger than the two, and they have the same denominator, that's the larger amount. When fractions have different denominators, they're unlike fractions. To compare unlike fractions, we have to change them to have the same denominator. They'll need a common denominator. And the common denominator will be a multiple of both original denominators. A multiple is the product of a number and a counting number. It's like the answers of the times table. So multiples of 2 would be the answers in the 2 times table, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so on. Multiples of 3 would be answers in the 3 times table, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. Multiples of 4 are answers in the 4 times table, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. See? 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12. So here's the counting numbers. So the multiples of 4 are down here, and they're like, the products of the four times table. See how easy that is to find them? So we just have a four a multiple amount of times. See? It's multiplied by a counting number. So we need to try to use the larger denominator as the common denominator first when we're comparing fractions. So here we have one half and one eighth. Because that eight is a larger number, we're going to try to use it to be our common denominator first. So we set it up and say, okay, 2 times what is 8? 4. So the 1 wants to be multiplied by 4, just like we did in the other video. And it would be 4 eighths. So now we can compare 4 eighths and 1 eighth. See? 4 eighths and 1 eighth, if they're both cut into the same number of pieces, we can see that the 4 eighths, which is 1 half, is greater than 1 eighth. There's more shaded, see? Now, there is another way to do this. You multiply the denominators together. 2 times 8 equals 16. So we can use 16 as the denominator. And we say 2 times what for the half? We say 2 times what is 16? 8. So the numerator gets jealous, and it wants to be multiplied by 8, and it becomes 8 sixteenths. So that's an equivalent fraction to that half. Now we need to turn that into a fraction that has 16 for a denominator. And 8 times 2 is 16, so the numerator wants to get multiplied by 2, so it's 2 sixteenths. And we can see that the 8 sixteenths is greater than the 2 sixteenths because the 8 is the larger numerator, see? So we can multiply them together, but uh, that doesn't always work, and sometimes it makes our work harder, okay? And I'll show you. So all we had to do is list the multiples of 2 because we had a 2 for a denominator. I'm going to list the multiples of 8. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We list them all. We list the multiples of 8. And we look for the very lowest first number that they have in common. They both have an 8 in common. So even though this one is an 8 as a denominator, the 2 can meet it at the 8, see? So they can, we could have multiplied it and gotten a 16, but they can meet at the 8. They both have 8 as a common multiple. And the 16 and 24 are too big. They could be used, but it makes us have more work to do. So we choose the 8. The 8 is a common multiple. For 2 and 8, we use 8 as the common denominator. You just make a list of multiples for those numbers, and you find the lowest multiple they have in common. That's actually called the least common multiple. Kind of 
makes sense that it's named that, right? Okay, so now it says to write greater than, less than, or equal to for these. So we have three-fourths and five-eighths. We need to know where the four and the eight can meet. Well, we list the multiples of four, four, eight, 12, 16. We list some multiples for eight, eight, 16, 24, and we can see they can meet at eight. Now we need to make the fractions equivalent. So if this is gonna be an eight, what did, let's do this. What did the four need to be multiplied to to become an eight? A two. So we multiply the three times two and we get a six. So that's our first one. Now let's, look, we're keeping the eight for this one. So now we have six ace and five ace. So this one is six ace. That's its equivalent, okay? Do you see how I did that? We made a list of the multiples. We saw they can meet at eight. So now we needed to make this one have an eight for a denominator. And three fourths, we do our little thing. Four times two is eight, three times two is six. We ended up with six eighths as our equivalent fraction. So we have six eighths and five eighths. We can see that the six eighths is bigger. So three fourths is bigger than five eighths. So it's a little bit of work. You're gonna need your scratch paper, but it's not hard. It's just a lot of steps, okay? Let's try this one. We make a list of all the multiples of this three denominator. We make a list of all the multiples of the seven denominator, and we can see they meet at 21. So in this case, we could have multiplied three times seven and gotten the 21. Now we need to make the equivalent fractions. So two thirds, we need to give it a denominator of 21. So three times what is 21? Seven. The numerator gets jealous, it wants to be multiplied by seven. So two times seven is 14. So now for this one, we've got a 14 21st. Now we need to find the equivalent fraction for this one with 21 as a denominator. So we have 5 sevenths, and it needs to have a denominator of 21. So seven times what is 21 times three? Five gets jealous, it wants to be multiplied by three, we get a 15. So now we have 15 21st for this one. So which one's greater, 14 21st or 15 21st? Ah, that one. So we know to go like this. So what we're having to do is several steps. We're listing the multiples, then we're giving them the same denominator, and we are raising this fraction to higher terms so that the numerator matches the denominator and it's equivalent to the two thirds, see? We need to do the same thing for this side. Let's do another one. Which is bigger, one fifth or one fourth? We list all the multiples of five because that's the denominator. We list all the multiples of four because that's the denominator and they can meet at 20. So now we have one fifth and it's gotta have a denominator of 20. Five times what is 20? Four. So the one gets jealous, it wants to be multiplied by four. So we have four twentieths, so that's this one. And now we have to do this one. We have one fourth, and it's gotta equal a 20 denominator. Four times what is 20? Times five. Numerator gets jealous, it wants to be multiplied by five, so we have five twentieths. So now we know that this is five twentieths. Which one's bigger, 4 twentieths or 5 twentieths? Ooh, 5 twentieths. The numerator is bigger and they have the same denominator, see? So lots of little busy work on your scratch paper. Let's try one last one. Which one's bigger, 3 eighths or 9 twenty-fourths? We make a list of all the multiples of eight because that's the denominator. We make a list of multiples of 24. 24 times one is 24, 24 times two is 48. We can see they can meet at the 24. So the 3 eighths needs to be converted to have a 24 as a denominator. And 8 times what is 24? Well, times 3. Numerator gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 3. So we get 9 24 ths So now on this side, we have 9 24 ths And look, on this side, we have 9 24 ths Oh, they're equal. See? 
All right, now, this one says put in order from least to greatest. We have three-fifths, one-twelfth, and seven-tenths. Now, if we try multiplying the denominators here, they're going to be huge. We have 12 and 10. We're going to multiply 12 times 10 to find an equivalent denominator. So let's first find the first multiple they have in common. So I list the multiples of 5. I list multiples of 12 and multiples of 10. I see they can meet at 60. That's a lot better than 120, isn't it? So for the 3 fifths, it needs to have a denominator of 60 because that's its common multiple. So we see that 5 times 12 is 60. 3 gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 12. We have 36 sixtieths. We do it for the 1 12th. What does 12 need to have a denominator of 60? It needs to be multiplied by 5. 1 gets multiplied by 5 also. We have 5 sixtieths. Now we do the 7 tenths. What does 10 need to be a 60? See? So they all have the same denominator. 10 needs to be multiplied by 6. 7 gets jealous. It gets multiplied by 6. We have 42 sixtieths. Now we have them all with the same denominator. We can put them in order from least to greatest. So this one's the smallest, 5 sixtieths. Then 36 sixtieths is the next one. That's the 3 fifths. And then the 7 tenths as 42 sixtieths would be the largest. See? I know this can be confusing, so if you have to watch the video again, no biggie, okay? But right now, you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 81. Just remember, if we have trouble finding that lowest common denominator, we can just multiply the denominators together to get a common denominator, okay? But sometimes it's easier to just list the multiples and then find the smallest one, okay? Our next video is going to be 6e, and we're going to be working with ratios. So we're moving along here. If you need more help, this video, 6.8 in the grade for math, there's going to be links to all these videos, okay? This one is very helpful. All right, it's putting them in order from least to small, least to greatest, and it might help you. All right, so check that out. Okay, check out any of those that you think might help you because they're all about comparing fractions. Every single one of those are about comparing fractions. All right, so now we're going to move on to ratios, and we'll see how you do. Okay, so practice. See if you can make lists of multiples and find common multiples, and see how you do on the skill focus. All right. I'll see you next video. Bye.